Hi everyone and welcome to Flip Teacher Professional Learning video 5. In this video we are going to start to put into practice some of the skills that we've been looking at. Uh, we're actually going to create a new document, we're going to share it with someone and we're going to do some collaborative editing together. So the, one of the things that we haven't looked at just yet is actually how to create um, a new document or what that looks like once we have. At the moment I'm in my personal Google Drive account. I know it's mine, my personal one, because the education logo is not in the top left-hand corner and because the profile picture is different to my education account. So I'm going to have to refer to myself in the third person a little bit over the next couple of videos while we do this, so please bear with me. So the teacher, so I'm going to call myself Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell has given me a writing task that I have to do. He's asked me to do it in, or he's asked the class to do it in Google Docs to share uh, share the draft writing task with a friend and to collaborate and edit each other's work. It's a fairly common task. You would quite often ask your students to write something, give, the, your, give their book to a friend, ask them to peer edit uh, and, and go back and redraft with, uh, with the changes. So it's a fairly regular, fairly uh, normal task in the classroom. This is a slightly different way of doing it. So to start this writing task, we obviously need to start with a blank document. To do this, we come to this button here, which says new, and we select new Google Docs. Now, Google Docs is the equivalent to Microsoft Word. Much of the functionality is the same. So as you can see, it's given me a brand new document. At the moment, it's untitled. I want to give it a name. So I click on that box and I type in, I'm just going to call this writing task for Mr. M. That's it. So much of this is the same. A lot of these symbols look uh, familiar. Here's my text, type, uh, my text types, my font size, my formatting options. I can insert links because obviously this is on the internet. I can insert links directly into the text. Um, text justification, uh, line spacing, bullet points, um, indenting. A lot of my add-ons, tables, a lot of my tools up here, a lot of them are very, very similar, so I'm not going to spend too much time going through those. You'll note that it says all changes saved in Drive. If I make a change, test, you'll see that this actually says saving, and now it pops up again, all changes saved in Drive. And it tells you when the last save was. This is the great thing, again, about Google Docs, is that everything's live, it saves automatically, and if your computer suddenly switches itself off and decides, you know what, it's Friday afternoon, I'm turning off, your document's pretty safe. Now, just to go back out here, wherever, whichever folder you're in when you create a new document, that is where that document will be created. So because I was just in the open drive, it's created that folder in the, in the drive. If I went inside a new folder, Let's just go into this folder here for a moment. If I just went new Google Doc, this is just for argument's sake. Come in, I've got a new document here. I'll quickly give this a title, test one. You can see it's changed all the saves. I'll write in test, saving, all changes saved. If I close that document again, there's my document within the football folder because that was the folder that I was in when I created the new document. It's really important that you remember that. Uh, if you're trying to create something to share with your stage colleagues um, and you've got a folder set up specifically for those documents, unless you are in that folder when you create that document, it won't be in that folder. I'll just delete that. So let's go back to the writing tasks document. So we'll load it up. So let's just have a bit of a look around at some of the other things that we need to be aware of. So a lot of this is the same. I'm not gonna go through that too much. Just be aware of this piece here that tells you when, um, when things were saved. Um, the other thing I want you to look at is over here on the right hand side. At the moment, the share button has a padlock on it. It has a padlock on it because it's a new document. It hasn't been shared with anyone, which means it's private. It's only visible to yourself. The editing mode 
um, you have three options. You can edit directly, you can make suggestions, or you can view only. This is really useful if you're doing um, editing for yourself. If you want to go through and you just want to make some suggestions, you're having a bit of a look through, you don't want to get involved in changing the nitty gritty, you want to leave some suggestions for later or else, you can actually set it to do that. Um, or if you want to view it only, you can do that as well. And that just hides the top part there. This button here, comments, this opens a thread. So similar to Facebook, you might make a post, a whole bunch of people will comment on it and there will be a thread of posts underneath it. Now, here's a little something I wrote earlier, assuming that it pastes in. Looks like it is, it's taking a bit of time. Now, this is something that I actually started writing when I was back in high school that I've always meant to get around to coming back to but never have. Let's try that again, make sure it pastes in properly, there we go. So, I've got a draft piece of writing here. I'm pretty happy with the draft, but the teacher has asked me to share it with a friend uh, for some peer collaboration. So let's have a look at what we need to do now. Obviously to share it with someone I need to click on the share button. Now this dialog box is exactly the same as the one that we looked at in the other video. So all I need to do here is type in the email address now, as it's an email I've already used, it's already in there. I need to set what level of editing permission the person has. Do I want them to be able to edit and make changes directly to the document? Do I want them to be able to comment only and let me make the decision? Or do I want them to be able to view only? Now, I would personally suggest um, for this type of activity that you allow, uh, that you tell students to set it to can comment that prevents the issue of um, Joe Bloggs deleted my writing and I didn't want him to um, from occurring. It means they can only make a comment. Um, they can't delete things. It also gives me the ability to put in a note. Um, so I'm going to put this in. Hi Bob. Um, please have a look and give me some feedback. That's it. Hit send, and it now pops up shared with one recipient, and you'll notice that the padlock is gone, and there's now the familiar um, icon of the silhouette, the two people silhouetted behind each other. That generates an email, which sends it to the email address uh, of the person you're sharing it to, and that's what that ding before was, it was the email popping in. Now, I've got two screens set here, this one on the top is my personal, um, my personal account. This one on the bottom will be um, my teacher account. It is my teacher's account and will be the, you know, the student, the friend that the document's been shared to. So when you hit send, that generates an email and here's what the email looks like. Uh, Brendan Mitchell has invited you to comment on the following document, writing task for Mr. M. It gives you the profile photo, Hi Bob, please have a look and give me some feedback. There's a link there, open in docs, or the link there. All you need to do is click on that. It will automatically open in a new tab, that document. That's all the time I've got for in this video. We'll come back and we'll have a bit of a look, a closer look at what happens next uh, in the next video. So we'll see you then.